This is a surgical video demonstration of aortic root and total arch replacement with frozen elephant trunk using a Thoroflex hybrid graft. We're presenting a case of a 78-year-old retired physician who was under cardiology investigation for exertional dyspnea and it was subsequently found to have severe aortic regurgitation and aortic root dilatation on transthoracic echo. She had a background history of non-obstructive coronary artery disease, systemic hypertension, mild mitral regurgitation, mild ventricular dilatation with normal ejection fraction, and an impaired respiratory function. Her contrast CT scans confirmed a 5 cm aortic root, an 8 cm ascending aorta, and a 5 cm aortic arch and proximal descending thoracic aorta. Cardiopulmonary bypass was employed. While cooling down towards 20 degrees centigrade, aortic root replacement was performed using a paramount magnet valve and a valsava graft, followed by reimplantation of the coronary buttons. Distal organ protection was achieved with deep hypothermic circulatory rest at 20 degrees centigrade, and cerebral protection was provided with additional bilateral anterior cerebral perfusion through separate perfusion catheters. A 15 cm long, 32 mm skirted thoroflex hypergraft from Vascotec to Rumo was deployed antigrately in a descending thoracic aorta. After dysdiotic reconstruction, the left subclavian artery, left common carotid artery, and innominal artery were anastomosed to the supraortic branches of the thoroflex graft sequentially. Distal perfusion via the side branch of the thoroflex graft was used. The operation was completed with an end-to-end -end anastomosis between the thoroflex graft and the valsava graft. After the median stenotomy, the innominal vein was identified. The pericardium was opened longitudinally. Three traction sutures were placed on each side. The innominal vein was slung with the tape, and the superiotic branches were dissected free as much as possible before going on a cardiopulmonary bypass. After systemic hybridization, a purse string for the aortic cannula was placed in the mid-arch. The arch was carefully cannulated with the Medtronic 24 French elongated one-piece arterial cannula. The aortic purse string was then snared. The arterial cannula was de-aired and connected to cardiopulmonary bypass circuit. A Medtronic three-stage venous cannula was inserted in the right atrium. Cardiopulmonary bypass was established and systemic cooling towards 20 degrees centigrade was initiated. A retrograde cardioplegia cannula was inserted into the coronary sinus. A left ventricular vent was passed through the right superior pulmonary vein and the heart was then offloaded. At this point, the flow was turned down and the ascending aorta was slung with the tape. Each superiotic branch was mobilized completely and slung with the tape. Under a low flow condition, an atraumatic aortic cross clamp was applied across the distal ascending aorta. Diastolic arrest was achieved with anti-grade and retrograde cold blood cardioplegia delivery. A longitudinal aortotomy was made. The blood in the aortic root was exsanguinated and salvaged. The ascending aorta was then transected just proximal to the aortic cross clamp.
the aortic valve was assessed, both coronary ostia were visualized, and the aortic root was carefully mobilized circumferentially. The right coronary button was prepared. A traction suture was applied. Similarly, the left coronary button was fashioned. Traction sutures were also placed above the commissures to increase the exposure. The aortic leaflets were resected. Two O Ethibond Excel annular sutures with plagets were used. The plagets were placed neatly below the aortic annulus. The annulus was sized and a 21mm paramount magnet valve was selected. A 24mm Rascotag gel weave valsalva graft was chosen and the collar was trimmed. The paramount valve was then fitted snugly inside of the valsalva graft. The annular sutures were passed through the prosthesis starting with the three commissures. Each needle was passed through the valve sewing ring first and then the collar of the valsalva graft. The sutures were clipped and cut. The valve conduit was parachuted down and the sutures were tied one by one around the annulus. A second hemostatic layer was achieved by using a 4 running protein suture that incorporated the remnant of the aortic wall, the sewing cuff of the valve, and more importantly, the collared portion of the valsalva graft. The suture was tightened circumferentially and tied. OV electrocautery was used to create a hole for the left coronary button, which was reimplanted using a 5 volt running protein suture. The right coronary button was then reimplanted in the same fashion. The aortic root was pressurized and tested by delivering a full dose of anti-grade cardioplegia. The hemostasis was satisfactory. Three anti-grade cerebral perfusion catheters were flushed and prepared. Under a brief period of deep hypothermic circulatory rest at 20 degrees centigrade, the arch was opened longitudinally. All superaortic branches were visualized from the inside of the arch and they were cannulated and perfused individually. A 32mm Vascotex Thoroflex hybrid graft with a 15cm standard portion was selected. A stiff Lindequist wire was used. 
The standard portion was bent slightly to conform to the curvature of the descending thoracic aorta and was guided down the aorta over the Lindequist wire. The handle was used to stabilize the graft in position. The sheath was retracted back through the splitter to deploy the self-expandable stent. The splitter was then removed and the sewing collar was freed. Finally, the delivery system was released from the hybrid graft. The distal aortic reconstruction was performed with the sewing collar of the Thoroflex graft using a 3-0 running proline suture. It was then reinforced with a second layer of plated 3O proline sutures. A perfusion cannula was inserted to the side branch of the thoroflex graft for anti grade distal organ perfusion. The graft was then de-aired and the distal aortic reconstruction was inspected for hemostasis. The left subclavian artery, the left common carotid artery and finally the innominate artery were anastomosed to the epiatic branches of the thoroflex graft sequentially. Each anastomosis was performed end-to-end -end using a single layer Fibre running proline suture. The graft was de aired and anti grip perfusion to each superadic vessel was re established. The valsalva graft and the proximal end of the thoroflex graft were trimmed to appropriate lengths. The thoroflex graft was trimmed further to accommodate the size discrepancy. The graft to graft anastomosis was performed using a 3 0 running proline suture. The sutures were tied, the heart was de-aired, and the patient was weaned from cardiopulmonary bypass and eventually.